Hey guys, welcome to Burning Rubber Garage. It's like 11 o'clock uh, Friday night. What better way to spend it than working on an American made muscle car, right? That's right. Um, a couple of catch up things. The old gauge right here. Um, we threw the stereo in. We just got the stereo in. We'll kind of show you that. We did the first fire. You guys saw that. We did the second fire. We didn't show you that because. When we routed the wires, we zip tied, and this kind of a tube here, which we're, we're going to clean that up a little bit, but it runs to the oil pressure cracked. So when we started the car the first time, we had no pressure. So we took it off to check the fitting, and we broke it off of there, and so we puked probably two, three quarts of oil out yeah. before we saw it, which made just a huge mess. So that's why we didn't really get a drive, but now we think we've got it fixed. We found out our gauge was junk, too. Yep. So our current original gauge... You know, you give it a shake and it does whatever it wants. It's, One time it's it was shot. stuck at zero, the other time it was past 100. It's it's done for. So, um, with that there, this gauge, 13 bucks to replace it. They're not the best gauges we know, but all I want is a gauge that works and that should work. It's worked in this car for who knows how long it was in there. We're also going to do an oil change. Um, and then we should be able to, oh, and look into the headlights. Oh, all yeah. All of a sudden have no headlights. I think when we were routing the electrical for the Phytech, we probably uh, missed a ground or something. Got probably, we had to relocate, quick. but come in here, you turn this guy up. We're on CD, so it should just... Any more than that, we get demonetized, so... Yep. Uh, anyways, you got two 6 by 9s in the back, at least five and a half. Um, what do you think? Probably five and a quarter, five and a half in the door. They're all Rockford Fosgate, um, and we're running them to uh, Alpine Amps. We show them that. Yeah, we'll show them. It's not gonna. It's not the prettiest wiring job because we still have to mount. Uh, we're gonna mount it. We just want to make sure. Play in the back, but. I guess I can kick it off. Um. Yeah, we're just going to an Alpine four channel. Um, does the trick. It keeps the power off the head unit. Uh, we're gonna. Make a cover for the back here. We're probably gonna mount that guy. Eh, it's dark uh, to the back of the seat. You got that bracket back in there. Hopefully, you guys can see it. You got a big one over there. Make a plate there, and, and we'll bend those that flat like it's supposed to be, and mount it to that probably until we enclose it. Yeah, run all the wiring behind it, um, and call it good. And then once we do that, we gotta sweep up, vacuum up some some oil absorbent kitty litter. <laughs> the whole front of the car is under kitty litter. There may or may not be, what What would you say, 40 pounds of kitty litter? There's at least there's 40 pounds because there's the other 40 pounder right there. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's trying to do its job. We puked all over and then we went to go take it for a spin, kind of rolled out of the driveway and ran a line down the driveway. It, so we pulled it back into the garage. <laughs> Um, the, the oil line where it was leaking is at the back there. Uh, if I pull this guy down. You'll be able to see it. I'll come around here. Down there. You can see the line headed right there. This clear tube is heading right to it. Um, we're going to see if that, that works now. Uh, it's, uh, it's brutal to put on. And there's not a lot of room to get to it. If you removed your distributor and stuff like that, you can do it. But we, uh, we just fought through it. So... Yeah, we're just glad it wasn't something more serious because that's a lot of oil, but I guess we did have it warming up for a little bit before we pulled it out. Mm -hmm. so. um, when you do that, when you replace anything like there, you're going to have a fitting, you know, similar similar to this in the back for your oil. Um, throw some PTFE, some nylon tape on there. Um, they're brass fitting, so, I mean, don't Hercules it, don't put 100 foot pounds of torque to it and snap it off in your block that's the last thing you want to do but it does need to be tight um, anything fitting wise that's metal on metal that does not have a compression sleeve and a compression nut needs nylon tape um, so you can kind of see if we got the end here oh yeah here, here's a good pick of uh, what a compression nut well, that goes or a like compression that. fitting you looks like that and I'll see if I can find the other so there's a compression fitting. There would be a compression nut on the outside that then is threaded that screws to the. Uh... That's really the same on both sides. So 
you'll take this, this guy will go down in there, it'll seat against there. That's what keeps it from leaking, and then you got a nut that kind of goes over the top, mm -hmm. pushes it, and it'll crimp itself to the line. Like, look, I'm pulling on that pretty good and pushing, it's not coming off. So we've got one like that there, and you got one going in there. The problem is getting the one back there. It's a huge pain in the ass because there's mm -hmm. not a lot of room, and that's just a little guy. So what we did, we put the bottom one in, so it has one you put in like this. I had this back up here. I got this threaded down in there, then pushed it, and then pushed the nut over the top of that and cranked her down, mm -hmm. tied it, tightened it. Uh, that's the way to do it. You lose that, you're probably not going to find it very easily. <laughs> no, so I don't know if is that showing tough. it. Yep, you're in frame. So yeah, and then there's just the gauge. So you can see now we've, we're at 25. So it's <laughs> we didn't want to run it without oil pressure. So we we ran it for a little bit, but then we saw it was puking because it was registering a little bit of oil pressure. But then when the line snapped clean off. This is old stuff. I mean, you can see it's a couple more bends like that, and it's going to break right off. Mm -hmm. So it's the heat cycled through it, just took its toll on it finally. Yeah. They make uh, two types. I believe this is a mechanical, and then there's an electric. Uh, is that what they would call it? I'm not quite sure so. what the exact term is, but see, this one has a little, it sends it right to the unit, but this other one would have everything it needed in there. And it would have, instead of this type of hookup, it would just have something you'd like. It would have see, a potentiometer. Just a little you know, wire on there that would tell this, hey, this is what it's reading. This does all the work up here. And they have an, uh, one for the oil pressure, water temp, all that. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more money. These are a mechanical. I don't know which would be more accurate. I would think this would be because it's reading right at the gauge. You don't have any loss going through. Yeah, but, I would think so. I was, I was looking at this, and, I mean, unlike like a hydraulic valve this just has a little uh, pressure I guess you could call it a pressure potentiometer down in there um, I don't know what it would officially be called but I mean everything hydraulic that I work on it's all mechanical <laughs> um, the other thing we wanted to show you this guy right here you can go buy your own amp kit and spend quite a bit of cash, or you could probably buy. What gauge wire are we running? Well, we ran eight gauge wire. Eight gauge wire. You know, we're we're a 360 watt amplifier. Eight gauge is more than enough. Yeah, the aught gauge, the zero gauge that was in here before was just a <laughs> joke for overkill. And it's just too much, and we we want tunes, but chances are we're probably going to be cruising and not having any tunes on anyways. Yeah. Uh, the car should be really close to rolling. We need to pull that block off too. Oops. That looks like crap. Oh well. Um, we'll get it off. But yeah, that's what it used to have. Uh, this fuse, this inline fuse that we've got right here, is going to do every bit as good as that. I mean, it just what you need it to do is what we didn't have it with this was. This was too big. So it found the least path of resistance and popped the fuse up on the block because the way these idiots had it wired. Everything's running where it needs to run. If the stereo were to pop that fuse again, it wouldn't affect any part of the drivability. We'd lose stereo, and that's it. And that's it. That's how it should be wired, but these guys didn't have it. But now, this guy will pop long before, so if we lose stereo, uh, probably if we lose speakers, I would mm -hmm. bet we come check there, because I imagine the stereo might still work. It's not yeah. drawing a lot of power, because it's not pushing anything to speakers. So Correct. We've been working our butt off on this car. The suspension... Still super soft. Every bushing in here is shot. <laughs> yeah, so, I'll give it a look down here. They're just shot. It rides like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> but rolls like a pig. So. Yes, it does. Yeah, we got uh, we got a couple odds and ends still to do. I think we'll do oil real quick. He's adjusted the speakers so the 6x9s are getting a little more bass. Uh, the door speakers, we're getting a lot of good uh, mid and high range out of those. The rears are kind of covering the whole spectrum. It actually had enough when we were in there. It's like, we don't need a sub. Yep. So mm -hmm. that part was pretty cool. Um, trying to think what else. The gauge was our biggest issue, and the oil leak has been our biggest issue that's kept this car off the road, which it should have been on the road last weekend. And then we just got to look at headlights, electrical, um, We have every else. light working except for the mm -hmm. headlights. Everything else is cosmetic. The rest of the, I mean, we've done a pretty good job of wire management, but just a little bit more wire management in the trunk. And We'll probably head back over to the Nova once this is done and do yep. a little wire tightening. Uh, we've got, uh, let's show them. Okay. Maybe, maybe we do a video, teach people how to properly wire manage, um, how to use split tube. And so this guy right here, 
It was 50 bucks. I mean, I'm not, I know it's not probably top of the line here. Came with a deck with Bluetooth, four speakers. This guy right here is going in this. It's going in the Nova. The Nova has a tape deck, is it, or is it an 8-track? Mm, it's, uh, I believe it. Oh, shoot. If it's an 8-track, let's leave it. No. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, deck. it's probably a tape deck. Yeah, the Nova, the Nova also has a bunch of wires. Yeah, it's a tape. Hey guys, looks like we got a lot done here. It's kind of more of a, a, a little bit more of a boring video, but to get the car on the road, it's what we had to do. Uh, we're going to see if we fixed the oil leak. We're going to see if we got pressure. Uh, Justin ripped apart all the wiring. We got high and low beams. If you can... There's your low. There's your high. So we got headlights now, so we can actually go drive this. Uh, let me kick on the Fitech there. You'll hear it come on. Fell over. Okay. all of our videos uh, we had the suburban out there idling and man that just overpowered this. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> they're both did. 350s but that one's just a lot meaner i don't know if it's the tips or what but um, we are dumping this straight down to the ground i thought that would echo that's shooting out and shooting out to the neighbors but mm. that thing thumps <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Uh, headphone users picked it up i know when i edited the video i heard it and i'm like <laughs> oh, here's yeah. suburban. suburban. So today you actually got to hear it. Um, it's dirty. The last time this was out, it died in the rainstorm. You can see I tried to use the wipers. Um, we got a little bit of shit on here from sitting so long. Uh, we filled up the tires. It's really ready to go run. I'd like to start it, let it run for like 10, 15 minutes, get up to temperature, and let the Phytech learn it, and then another day take it out when it's cold and let it learn how it's doing when it's uh, when it's cold out. Mm -hmm. Problem is we got a storm rolling in tomorrow. It's supposed to dump like four to eight inches. Yeah, no one likes snow. You want to check oil? Yeah. All right, guys, so let's put this back in. We're going to check the oil here. We just pulled it out. You want to pull it out and wipe it. Put it in there. I let it sit while I fold my uh, paper towel up. Three folds, four float folds, it's just sure, ridiculous. Sure, sure there we go. <laughs> so I take this out, I grab it where it's probably not gonna have oil. I set it on here and I pinch it over. I mat it down and I take a peek. So our ad line's right there and if you can kind of see, it's hard to see there, we're right here. Solid right there and a little bit up here. So we are, we could probably add just a hair, but I don't know, we're pretty close, huh? Yeah. I don't know if that camera can pick it up. It's, it's picking up the light. There it goes. So you can kind of see here. Here's our ad line. We're about right here. So 
I think it's right oh, there, and there's then we got the two full right there. And we're in, we're in between right it, there. so we'll run it a couple times and then check it. Yeah. Next video, we should see this guy out there. Next time you see this car, I should say that we're actually touching it, working on it. We should be out. It'll out be out there. running. Yep. We'll go cruise it, and then I think eventually, should we, do we want to tell them the plan? To run? Sure. Yeah, we're gonna run this versus the Fox Body because I this this car's on my list. The Fox Body's on my list. If I had to pick top five cars, it's on. This is on my list. That's on my list. Probably maybe not a GT. It'd probably be the Cobra. Mm -hmm. But first gen versus a Fox. There's similar weights. Very similar weight. Within 50 pounds, we decided, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Within 50 pounds, you've got a 3025 speed, 353 speed. You got highway gears in that. It's like a three. It's either a two nine something or a three oh seven something like that. It's a way. It's not made for and, performance. And we haven't pulled this, so we don't know we what's don't in know here. We don't know what we got here, but I'm guessing it's. I would say at least three twenty seven, if mm -hmm. not higher. Rear gear. Don't know what kind of performance cam, if any's in there. We don't. Don't, we don't really know much about, about the information about the block or the motor. We don't really have a lot, but we know that the. Once we go out and cruise it, this thing will be hitting a lot closer to peak than we ever did with that Holly. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Just because this thing is going to learn itself. And that Nova, we hit the gas the first time out, and it was like falling on its face. And we're like, dude, this is not cool. But then two or three runs. Laps, dude, it was ripping. Yep. <laughs> yes, it was. And it's supposed to keep learning. And then we need to get in and play with some settings. But overall, I think this project took the longest, but I think it's going to be probably the most rewarding mm -hmm. because of all the time put into it. I mean, I really thought we'd finally take it for a spin, which is the first time since November, but we puked all over the garage. Wasn't pretty. Yes. Wasn't pretty, man. Um, none of them are going to be able to take that car. No, There's unfortunately. No but I think the winner out of this should take on the Nova. And then I think the Nova should take on the GT. The Nova will beat both of these? Yeah. <laughs> But then the Nova should take the GT without the new tires, because with 555s, those that thing car's gonna hook and no. Car's gonna hook and it already traps a lot harder than I think any of these would. Oh yeah. Past the quarter mile mark. <laughs> what was it? One one twenty something? One thirty? One? No, it was like one. It, it should be higher, but no, they weren't that high. Oh, what were you trapping at? One thirteen, one fifteen. Oh, that's still awesome. It's still up there, but yeah, it should be. It should be a one twenty car, but. We're not hitting that, but we're also running a 13-second pass, which is slower than a stock GT did. <laughs> and granted, we're at 5,000 feet, so that's why we want a fuel injection with these, because we're at elevation. It gets cold. It gets hot. You go, you can go from here up to 10,000 on a paved road, mm -hmm. and you can go down to sea level. But with this, these two cars now, I feel like I could get in them and drive them in the fuel injection system. It's going to run perfect. Yeah. Other shit's going to break. We know it is. Right. But this car, I think, is well buttoned up. I think our next step is to try and figure out, get the heater blowing, mm -hmm. and then run hoses to it. Um, that one has the hoses hooked up. I just think the wiring is not there to give it that right. power. Um, either one of them would be total potential of being a daily driver if you wanted them to. Oh, yeah. They're Something ready for it. i the starter on this one. I don't know if we fried it. Because I... I started it a ton. Yeah. When it broke down, left me stranded, I tried starting it to get out. I cranked, I cranked, I cranked. I cranked till the battery died. Um, so maybe look at the shims, make sure it's lined up proper. That's why we bought the one with the warranty. Yep. And <laughs> take it back if it doesn't work. Take it back, get a new one. And then my thing is, I think it has to come up. But I don't remember putting any shims in. I'd have to go rewatch our video. I'd have to look. I don't remember. Or we could jack it up again and look at it. You don't realize that the Nova feels like a 4x4. <laughs> Getting a jack under there is this relatively like easy. This feels like a freaking show car that lays frame. Mm -hmm. It just feels low. Like when you sit in this seat, you feel like you're on the floorboard. When you sit in that one, you feel like you're in the car, not on top of the floorboard. Right. It's a big difference. But guys, we have a stereo. We have a 350 V8 running. We have oil pressure. We're not puking fluids anymore. It's hard to tell with all the fluids we spill. I spill <laughs> a lot of coolant. I spilled a ton of oil, um, not just once, but two or three times on the oil because I, yeah. I couldn't trying find, to find it, so the I had to oil fill leak. it up and try and find it. And, yeah, and we got stereo. That's what I'm excited about. I like mm -hmm. to cruise around listening to Jason Aldean. That's right. It's in the deck right now. <laughs> yep. And we got car shows coming up. Yes, we do. They're going to be coming up. We'd like to get this guy out. Me and him will cruise this one out there, uh, mainly because it's the one that's registered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Registered-ish. 
yeah, nine of eighteen. We got there. You go. We got nine. Got till September. Seven months. Six months. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we got six months with this. So, hopefully you guys like this video. We're up over eleven hundred subscribers. We keep kind of growing. I appreciate the comments. Um, it's fun to see what you guys say. There's a guy that finally just realized he lives by us. And he's going to look at a fox body. And the funny thing is, he's like, who got 60,000 miles? Like, oh, it's the red one. Yep. Because we know the <laughs> We already know which one. We knew what he was talking about. I don't know if he bought it or not. If he did buy it, me and Justin will go meet up with him in the white one. And we'll go uh, probably do a walk around to his. His car kind of has the stuff on it I want on that one. Mm -hmm. I want gears. I want full exhaust. I want intake. Um, I want the alternator upgrade. He's got some better wheels and tires, too. I don't know about tires, but probably better than what we got. But, uh, uh, updated wheels. Updated wheels versus the old pony wheels, which I don't have a problem with the pony wheels, but I don't think he's lowered as much either. But we'll see. If he doesn't get it, I'm going to go look at it. There you go. We went and looked at a Bronco tonight, and it was, it was too far gone. Yeah. The Body ten, was 10, rust 000. everywhere. It had a tree fall on it, screwed the entire hard top. He Mo found the driver's side pretty much from the front to back. You just you pick a spot. And you were probably completely gonna rusted. Yeah, I didn't want to hit it with a screwdriver. You know, I'd been punching holes through it. <laughs> so. The lady just watched us. The doors didn't open. Just pull um, it. Just pull it. Lift up and pull it. And finally, I just yanked it and it opened. The interior is just shot. Motor would not turn over. Uh, so it might be choke locked was up. locked. Yeah, it could have been seized up. Who knows? It had such cool features. Lifted 35s, four speed. Uh, 351 or a solid feeling. I went and looked at a C10, and I hope this guy watches it. Uh, he was a total ass. So mm -hmm. I just, I, I mean, I should have a C10 sitting out there, short bed, single cab, but he was just an asshole. So uh, I didn't buy it. We, we kind of fought over about 500 bucks, and all he had to do was say, hey, man, I'm, I'll fix the heater, and I'll fix these other couple little things. Because he's telling me it's 10, 15 bucks, and I think he knew that those parts were going to be. Yeah. I mean, it was just been shady. I mean, he said the heater worked and everything was amazing. You go up there and he magically broke the, the knob the off knob so he couldn't to turn, turn it on. Was broken. Um, um, he also said the carburetor ran really rich in Minnesota. And when I checked Minnesota, they're not very much above sea level, they're pretty low. Mm -hmm. When you bring it up to 5,000, it should run even worse. So it, his story didn't make sense on that. He'd only had it a couple months, so I, th I think it was going to have a lot of issues. Yeah. The body was good. One dent, uh, needed a little bit of paint One work, but nothing out. crazy. I've noticed on the C10s, a lot of the doors don't match. Yeah. They just, they fade. I don't know what the deal is, but we'll keep looking. Um, and you guys out there watch and see something. Uh, first gen blazer, full size blazer, 67, 72. Uh, 6772 C10 single cab short bed uh, or, or first, first gen first Bronco. Gen Bronco. That's what I really like to, to see next. Um, Unless someone finds a really cool Defender, then for a good price. That's a good price. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good price. No. <laughs> that's the key. It's got to be a good price. But uh, me and Justin are going to get together again this weekend and we're going to work on your rides. We had, I think we only had five or six sent in. Mm -hmm. Maybe after you guys see what we're going to do with it, we can get more. But if you're watching this and you made it to this point, Burning Rubber Garage Rides at gmail.com. It might go this way. I got to figure that out. I just remember right <laughs> to left, left to right. But uh, yeah, we'll, we're going to do that still. And we do plan on taking this out. If we don't get snow for some reason, this car will take it out. Uh, I think we're going to work on the trailer too. Yeah. Winch. Get a winch on the trailer, finish the decking. Cars on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, battery, solar panel. For battery, solar panel. Some charging. Winch. You said paint the deck. Yeah. We're going to use a deck paint, right? Yeah, I think we should do a deck paint. Just pressure wash what's there off and roll a deck paint on. And we're going to show you how to install, because uh, a lot of the GM vehicles came like this. They have a 7-pin, mm. but they don't have a trailer brake. Right. All the wires are there. So we'll show you how to GM wire a trailer brake in. It's pretty All easy. All the wires are bundled. You cut it, you snip it, you plug it in pretty much. You terminate some ends, you put it in, and then you yeah. go under the hood there, and you got to get two nuts, put it on. You have trailer brakes. So you I buy a hundred dollar brake controller. Um, you can tow a lot more safely. Yeah, and it's crazy because you take it to a shop and they'll do it all day long and they'll charge you three four hundred dollars. We'll be into it a hundred bucks plus mm. some stuff we already have over here About to terminate. About a thirty so. forty minute labor job is all. <laughs> but I don't know. My my feeling is it's this car is going to be should be solid for a little bit. Yep. Needs tires. It does need tires. The tires are sold. The shop wouldn't work on them. 
<laughs> and maybe some updated wheels. Yeah. It's all just don't get me wrong, wrong, I like those wheels. But. I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be those wheels, man. Those are good looking wheels. The, the Foose, Foose wheels? Boss. Oh, those Boss wheels. They're Boss, but the Foose looks the same. Yeah. They had a set for this up at... Uh, Less swan. The plastic dips held up, though. Yeah, I didn't put on enough coats. That was just to get them. I was sick of the silver. They had a set of Foose wheels with some nice tires that a guy bought for a 72 or 71 Camaro. They told me they'd fit on this, so I came home, uh, checked the funds, called them back. They were gone already. Oh, they were no. Right on the showroom. <laughs> so, they, I mean, it wasn't my favorite set of rubber, but they would have updated and made this car look like it should. Mm -hmm. This looks like it's still stuck in the... 70s? Yeah, stuck in the 70s. But no, we want to thank you guys for watching. If you watch this long, hit, hit the like button. We appreciate seeing that. Uh, if you're watching for the first time, subscribe. We do appreciate seeing that go up. Mm -hmm. um, we made it past the mark, and now I think we're just going to keep climbing. Yeah, definitely. We'll see. We got some stuff coming up. We want to hit the. Uh, we want to try an autocross. I think the Fox Fly is going to be our weapon of choice. One, it's cheap. We hit a wall or something. Mm -hmm. Two, if we break something, it's a lot easier to fix. And I think that just has too much power to autocross. Yeah, I might be able to talk my wife into letting me take her 2015 Lexus IS 350 F Sport to autocross. And see how it does compared to that pile. It would be fun, but I don't know <laughs> if she'll let me take her $60,000 car to autocross. <laughs> Maybe don't tell her you've taken it to autocross. So you can find out. She doesn't much our videos. No. Tell her that I'm going to go get it detailed for her. <laughs> Love you, babe. I'm going to take you and get your car detailed. Take my truck. Take the truck that I know you hate driving because you think it's too damn big. <laughs> yeah, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Hopefully, uh, I think this will go up, and then you'll see the hopefully the rides one if we have time this weekend. It'll probably have to be Sunday. I know you got a lot going on. we got a lot going mm -hmm. on. Um, the other thing I want to do is we want to show you the Nova, so that video should be coming out after this one, too. Uh, we've already done the work. I just uh, I need to actually start it. Yeah. Film it. Uh, Definitely. We put the battery in, we ran some new wires, we got an ignition switch, we put in our own hidden kill switch. It should be ready to roll because before it wouldn't keep running. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.